Hi, my name is Dami and welcome to my channel. If you're new to this channel, I'm a fourth year medical student and in this video, I'm just gonna give you a tour of my desk setup. I spend a lot of time at this desk whenever I'm studying, editing videos, making music, or just watching content in general. And I think I've finally gotten to a point where I'm happy with pretty much everything on this desk. And so with that said, roll the montage. First of all, I'm going to talk about the desk and chair since they both came with the dorm room. I don't really have much to say about the chair, like it does the job. I've been using the same chair for about four years and I haven't had any problems with it so far. I don't really like the desk on the other hand. The color of the desk is alright because it matches everything else in the room, but it is a bit small. And things start to get really cramped once I start adding more and more stuff to the desk, especially when I'm busy. Apart from that, it also has this really annoying drawer that hits off my knee every single time I open it. And the drawer also makes it really hard for me to actually sit right into the desk as well. I have no idea why it's there. And finally, there's this lip that goes around the whole desk that kind of makes it awkward for me to actually mount anything to the desk. Like the boom arm just barely mounts but i'm not able to mount my monitor for example because the lip just gets in the way i definitely would have mounted the monitor by now because it would have freed up a lot of space on the desk but i can't do that all in all the desk does the job but i definitely would have replaced it by now if i was allowed to now let's talk about the centerpiece of the desk setup which is the monitor now this monitor is a xiaomi mi ultra wide and specs wise it runs at a maximum resolution of 3440 by 1440p and it has a maximum refresh rate of 144 hertz and i absolutely love this monitor i remember when i first got this monitor i was really apprehensive of the size but after i started using it a bit more i started to appreciate the extra real estate especially when i'm getting work done like for example i can have multiple windows open at one time and apart from that watching videos and playing games on this monitor is absolutely amazing because the monitor fills up a lot more of my field of view. The monitor also leans into looking minimal and aesthetic and because of that I really like the way it looks. As part of the whole minimal team it also has this really cool cable management system in the stand so all the cables route right into the stand and end up being hidden from view which helps to give my desk a really clean and minimal look. The monitor does have a VA panel instead of an IPS panel so the colors aren't as vibrant as I would like especially when compared to the MacBook's screen but I kind of like the inky look of the VA panel especially when I'm watching movies because of the high contrast. The one thing that I don't like about the monitor though is the fact that it doesn't have any USB-C ports. And this made it really awkward to connect my monitor to my MacBook Pro, which only has two Thunderbolt ports. In order to get around this, I got a CalDigit Soho dock and connected all my peripherals and the monitor to the dock and then i have one cable coming out of the dock into my laptop this one cable solution is really great because whenever i come to my desk with my laptop all i have to do is connect one cable and i'm up and running i do have the usb-c cable plugged into an anchor usb-c hub though and that just gives me extra ports whenever i want to connect external hard drives or an sd card for example all in all i really like this monitor The machine that's powering the setup is a MacBook Pro 13 inch with the M1 chip. This laptop is amazing. Before using this laptop, I was using a Xiaomi Mi Notebook Pro and I had that running macOS as a Hackintosh. If you don't know what a Hackintosh is, it's when you install macOS on hardware that doesn't typically support it. However, this setup wasn't really suitable for my needs because the Hackintosh wasn't as stable as I would have liked and it just kept crashing and bugging out at random points. So I eventually just bit the bullet and then bought a MacBook instead and I've been grateful for that decision ever since. The MacBook is fast, it's light, it's powerful, the battery lasts for ages, the fan really ever kicks up. Like it's an amazing laptop and I would definitely recommend it to everyone. It handles everything I throw at it, which includes video editing, photo editing, um, some music production and just general schoolwork. My laptop is usually accompanied by this iPad, which is a 2017 10.5 inch iPad Pro. And I bought this thing almost two years ago and it's an integral part of my workflow right now. It's really nice being able to put all my notes and books on this device because it syncs up to iCloud and because of that I'm able to access all my files on my phone whenever I need to and this has saved me so many times. The iPad also has a feature called Sidecar which just gives me an extra display to use whenever I need it. This feature is really handy whenever I'm using my laptop in the library and I need an extra display to use for a bit more display real estate. All in all, the iPad is great and it definitely would be a lot harder for me to get work done if anything happened to it.
As for my mouse, I'm using the Logitech MX Master first generation. I got this mouse almost two, three years ago off a friend and it's been amazing for what I use it for. First of all, it's really comfortable and ergonomic and it also has a ton of buttons all over it that I can assign various commands to. And this is really handy for when I'm editing videos because I'm able to assign certain shortcuts to each button, which just makes editing videos a lot more efficient for me. Since this is the first generation of the mouse though, it is starting to show its age a bit. For example, the battery life doesn't last as long as I would like. And the Logitech option software is also a bit limited and bugs out a bit when it comes to this mouse. So I probably will end up replacing it for the MX Master 3 in the future. Now let's talk about audio. For speakers, I use the PreSonus Eris E3.5s and these are studio monitors and they sound amazing. They weren't cheap, but since computer speakers aren't things that get upgraded pretty often, I wanted to buy speakers that would last me a long time and will sound great even whilst I'm upgrading other parts of my setup. As for sound quality, they sound amazing. The sound profile is a bit more on the flat side, but this makes it great for when I'm editing videos or making music. These speakers also get pretty loud, but since I'm living in student accommodation, I can't really have them turned up for too long. So whenever I want to listen to music for a long amount of time, I'd usually use my XM3s or my AirPod Pros. But since those are consumer headphones, they're not really great for making music or mixing audio. So I'd use the studio monitors in those cases instead. As for audio input, I'm using the Blue Snowball. This is a budget mic, but I think it's great for my needs. I mainly got it back when I was heavily into gaming, but since I don't game as much now, I just use it for video calls and voiceovers. I also use it sometimes when I'm making music, but this is very rare. All in all, this mic is great for my needs, but I probably will end up getting a lav mic in the future just because this mic isn't that portable. Now, this big thing behind me here is my digital piano. It's a Yamaha P95 and I got it back when I was in first year of someone who's a few years ahead of me. And at the time I had been teaching myself how to play piano for about four years. Literally play this keyboard at least once or twice a day. And usually I'd have it connected to my MacBook with Logic Pro or Mainstage running, just so I'd be able to have access to various other VSTs and sounds that would sound a lot better than the stock ones that came with the keyboard. I usually use it when I want to relieve some stress or when I'm making music. If you want to hear some of my music, I will leave a link down in the description if you're interested. Um, I haven't uploaded any new music in a while, but I do plan on uploading more on that channel a bit more this year. So stay tuned. I usually keep my storage drives like over there and I have two different types of storage. The first one is an external SSD, which I keep all my active files on that I'm using to edit. And I have a five terabyte hard drive, which I keep a lot of my backups and past projects on. I do have a lot more drives than just these two. Um, these are just the ones I'm using right now. I have a lot of data. As for the smaller things around my desk, I do have small pieces of memorabilia here and there. A lot of these are either gifts or things that I've kept since my childhood. For example, I have a Batman figurine up there that I've had since I was around 14, 15. I have a Newton's cradle behind the camera and I also have a few fake plants dotted around my room as well. I think these just add a bit more color and personality to my room and makes it a bit more homely. Anyways, this setup definitely does the job and I believe it's perfect for my needs as a content creator and as a student. I probably won't change much about the setup right now. Maybe I'll just add a few pieces of artwork just to give the room a bit more personality. But apart from that, I don't really think I'll change much. I will have links to everything I've talked about in this video down in the description. And if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you liked and subscribed. And if you have any questions, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. Anyways, that's it for me. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.